The Jackson reforms are a package of uh, reforms to the civil justice system which cover five discrete areas. First, the uh, funding of uh, civil litigation. Secondly, the costs rules, the rules governing the costs which the winning party recovers. Thirdly, case management. Fourthly, the promotion of alternative dispute resolution. And fifthly, uh, the rules governing the assessment of costs at the end of a case. Are the reforms working? The short answer to that question is yes. I am bound to accept that in the early months there were some teething troubles. The uh, implementation of the rules uh, in many areas came at the last moment. Some of the reforms were unwelcome to the profession and there were some delays in the litigation process as a result of the introduction of the reforms. But those teething troubles are now past. Lawyers are becoming more comfortable with the reforms. Both solicitors, barristers and judges are becoming more familiar with and skilled at costs budgeting. Despite the objections to the ending of recoverable success fees and recoverable after the event insurance premiums, it has now turned out that litigation can proceed perfectly smoothly without those unnecessary add-ons to litigation costs. The uh, new costs management rules are working well uh, and overall I would say that the reforms are successful. I got the idea of writing a book about the reforms from a number of lectures which I gave to students in recent years. The reaction of the students was very often one of gratitude for a user-friendly explanation of the Jackson reforms. The two reports upon which those reforms are based span more than a thousand pages and they are not easy reading. Students and young practitioners tell me that they welcomed a user-friendly account of the reforms, what they're intended to achieve and how they are interlinked. Therefore, the first purpose of the book which I have written is to provide a user-friendly explanation of the reforms for the benefit of students and young practitioners who don't wish to plough through extensive reports, uh, extensive lectures and a lot of detailed reforms. The second reason why I wrote the book was to set out where I think the implementation of the reforms is going wrong and what further steps are necessary to make those reforms work properly. My objective in writing the book is to promote a proper understanding of the reforms and also, hopefully, to promote better litigation practice. The book which I have written sets out a number of areas where further work on the reforms is necessary. Uh, four particularly important areas are these. First, the present rules for damages-based agreements must be revised to make uh, the regime uh, readily usable by lawyers. At the moment, lawyers are not making uh, much use of the available DBAs because of problems in the regulations. Secondly, there is a need to extend the fixed costs regime. At the moment, there are fixed recoverable costs for personal injury cases in the fast track. I have always recommended, and I still recommend, that there need to be fixed recoverable costs 
for all the other cases in the fast track. Those are the non-personal injury cases. On top of that, uh, once the fast track is dealt with, we need to develop a regime of fixed recoverable costs in the lower regions of the multi-track, as recommended in my report. The great advantage of fixed costs is that parties know where they stand at the outset. They do not have to undertake the uh, work of budgeting at the beginning or, or costs assessment at the end of the case. I don't say we need fixed costs across the whole civil justice system, as there is in Germany, but we do need fixed costs for the lower value cases. Uh, thirdly, uh, we need to introduce a new form bill of costs which takes advantage of modern technology uh, as set out in my final report. At the moment, a new form bill of costs which gives effect to those recommendations is being piloted. Once the pilot is complete, I very much hope that the new form bill of costs will come in and will be mandatory. Fourthly, there is a strong need to develop a contingent legal aid fund. This is a fund to assist uh, people of limited means in bringing uh, claims, including lower value claims. The Hong Kong uh, legal community has set up a contingent legal aid fund there and it works very well. A number of uh, Australian states have set up contingent uh, legal aid funds and I have recommended that we should do the same in this country. A contingent legal aid fund works like this. The uh, lawyers running the fund uh, raise some seed corn funding from an appropriate source. In Hong Kong, it was the uh, Jockey Club. I have made recommendations for where the seed corn funding might come from in this country. Then, uh, using those monies, they uh, finance litigation and take a modest proportion of damages recovered in all successful cases. This is a form of privatised legal aid it works well overseas, and we ought to be introducing it in this country. I'm pleased to say that the Law Society, uh, the uh, Chartered Institute of Legal Executives, and the Bar Council are all now supportive of this idea, and they have set up a working group to take it forwards. Uh, my book sets out a number of other areas where further work is necessary on the reforms, but those four matters are, I would suggest, of particular importance. That brings me to the end of my video. If you're still watching or listening, thank you very much for doing so.